when furniture became industrialized, it kind of lost its artistic flair to me anyway. It just became more about the profit instead of the quality. If you want to make a nice piece of furniture, you, you've got to be in it. Your mind can't be wandering and thinking about other things. So this particular chair is a Sackback Windsor. It was designed uh, around 1760. Woodworking has been, uh, you know, has become a uh, kind of a refuge for me. When I first got into it, you know, I was going through a tough time. I've got two brothers, older brother, younger brother. We played sports, all really good students. That was the plan, you know, growing up, I'd go to college and get a good ed education and get a good job. High school um, was when he started to drop off. He started hanging out with kids that smoke pot. We did psychedelics in high school, you know, ecstasy, mushrooms. There's other things too. I mean, I was, you know, I was battling with depression and anxiety. Helped me cope, it helped me, um, you know, just kind of let my um, guard down. He didn't want to start college. He wanted to take a break, you know, and just do other things. I was working with a buddy of mine and we we're pitchforking, you know, sod over our shoulder as fast as we can before the sun comes up. And um, I messed my back up. I ended up having bulging discs. And I had taken painkillers before, but not for pain. So I started taking those and they they um, fixed the pain. And it also, you know, I sort of, you know, wow, these really kind of helped me uh, emotionally and psychologically too. Before I knew it, I was, you know, I couldn't live without him. We started seeing a change in him when he would come home and he would go out to the porch and smoke a cigarette and he would fall asleep with a cigarette still burning in his fingers, you know. We had to go out and wake him up, confronted him and he, um, you know, he admitted that he was on opiates. Do basically anything to get him. Man, I did a lot of shitty things. That's the, my biggest regret, you know, is all the, the things I did to the people I care about, you know, because I didn't do it to strangers, you know, people that I thought I would get in trouble, you know, they would report me to the cops or turn me in or something. I did it to the people that cared about me. He would get angry and um, violent, you know, he never, he never hurt us or even came close to hurting us, but he would he would throw around the porch furniture or put his fist through the wall or, um, you know, to try to get us to give him money. A lot of times I'm ashamed to say we would give in. We were enablers. We didn't know what else to do. If I didn't take him, I was, I'd get sick, you know, you get withdrawal symptoms, you get um, I mean, just incredible anxiety. You know, you feel like you're having a panic attack. We put him in rehab a couple of times. Um, that didn't work. We, he tried to quit cold turkey a couple of times. That didn't turn out. He ended up in the emergency room one time. You can't just stop taking those. There was one instance where I was hanging out with my dealer. He had some guy who wanted some pills, so we um, met him up and he took his money. We went and got pills and did them ourselves. Guy was waiting for me when I got back to the house. He had a big lead pipe and he wanted his money. And he was going after Daniel and the next door neighbor saw the commotion and called the cops. It was just really frightening that somebody like that would come to our house. Everybody kept telling us, and some of the other mothers of friends that were addicts, 
You know, you got to practice tough love. You got to kick them out. It was like a roller coaster, you know? It was really hard to watch. The opiate addiction, I'd say, probably lasted five or six years. I pawned everything I ever owned. The whole day was dedicated to scoring drugs. It got to a point where I just couldn't do it anymore. I was just sick of feeling sick and tired. That's when I, um, you know, started, I got introduced to woodworking. Welcome to my shop. This is a tool cabinet that I, I built a few years ago. Laguna Revo 1836, draw knives, scorps. I've got my DMT diamond plates. This right here is my uh, split top Rubo workbench with uh, bench crafted hardware. Eight inch uh, Powermatic uh, joiner with a helical head. I like working with my hands. Um, I was just looking for something to occupy my time. You know, really liked it, really enjoyed it. Discovered chair making um, a couple years ago. Did a lot of research on that. You just gotta be really more in tune with, um, with what you're doing. And it takes a lot more practice to kind of master the different skills needed to make these chairs. where you sit. I think about that. You know, just what, if high school uh, had wood shop when I got into high school, they had gotten rid of it. Yeah, if I was exposed to woodworking at that age, you know, who knows, you know, where my life would have gone. All right, I think we got it fit. It's like vocational uh, work is like inferior, you know? It's like they want you to become a doctor or a lawyer and all that shit's great, but you know, some people just aren't cut out for that shit. They're beautiful, you know. Everything he's made has been beautiful. The woodworking gave him his self-respect back, his self-esteem, you know, he could take pride in, you know, making something. I'm just so grateful <laughs> that he's still alive, you know, really. And he's back to his loving, kind self. You know, I'm just so proud of him. Every chair is basically him. It's wonderful to see him um, 
the way he is now. There's nothing you can tell an addict, you know, that's gonna make them quit, you know? There's nothing. Otherwise, you know, we wouldn't have this issue with mass addiction. You feel completely hopeless, you know, at times, you know, it's just um, no joy in life. I mean, it's, it's a pretty dark space. You have to really want it, man. You can't um, force it on anybody. I would just say, you know, don't give up on yourself. Who knows if they would have kicked me out, what would I would have become? If I would have, uh, you know, overdosed or, you know, or did something really stupid, you know, ended up in prison. Very thankful that they, they didn't, they, they, they didn't give up on me. They could have uh, handled the situation differently and they, uh, they stuck by me even though I was, you know, you know, a horrible roommate. <laughs>